Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to do the K-fold cross validation using Python. In our previous video, we did the uh, its uh, conceptual part on whiteboard. So as you can see that on my screen, I have imported few of the libraries that I'm going to use in today's exercise. For today's exercise, I'm going to use Iris dataset, which comes with the SQLN library. So basically, we, before jumping on to the code part, I'm going to remind you that why we need k-fold cross validation. Assume that you, uh, you have a data set, you created a model and uh, uh, before while creating uh, basically before creating the model you did the train test split of your data uh, and you uh, trained your model on on the training subset and then you tested your model on the uh, test subset but accuracy of training and testing is different uh, which might be due to overfitting so what actually happens is that uh, is that uh, during uh, the train test split uh, we pick uh, every time we do the train test split we pick different samples so due to which uh, what happens is that in the testing subset it might get a different data points uh, which model have never seen during the training phase and due to which our accuracy may go down so this is the problem that uh, why we need it and what we do in the k fold cross validation in k fold cross validation we basically make sure that our model get taste of um, every data point during the training as well as the testing phase so how it actually works we basically let's say this is the size of our data set we basically create k folds let's say if i k is equal to three so that means uh, i will create three fold one two and three and uh, what I'm going to do in each iteration for each fold, I'm going to keep a different training set. So let's say this is my first iteration. In my first iteration, I kept this portion for the testing and the second and third for the training. In the next iteration, let's say I picked the second portion for the testing and first and third for the training. And in the third iteration, I picked the third for the testing, this one for the testing and the first two for the training. So this way, what will actually happen? My model will get test taste of basically uh, each data point during the training as well as the testing. And it will not give surprises during the testing. So this is about the k-fold cross validation. So let's get started. So now I have loaded this Iris data set. The next thing what I can do is I can I can basically uh, uh, do the train test split. Uh, so for doing the train test split, we have uh, in our model selection library k k-fold um, in this our sklearn.model selection we have train test split uh, so we create the object of it we pass the x which is basically iris to data and our y which is iris to target and the test size so uh, now i have created now assume that for this problem we have uh, three models in mind let's say assume that i want to check logistic regression uh, svm and the third one is let's say random forest so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the uh, object of these models uh, one by one. And uh, so let's say for the logistic regression, I created the object of logistic regression and then I fit uh, fit means that I'm training over X train and Y train and then I'm getting the scores after this. Uh, now, the same way, let's say I do for the SVM classifier, which is basically uh, now for SVM classifier, let's say I did like this way, uh, which is also giving me the almost the same accuracy or the same score. And third one I'm going to try is a random forest. So what, uh, what will happen is that in random forest, create the uh, object of random forest classifier, give the N estimators, N estimators means how many trees you want to create. And let's say it is 95%. Now, uh, problem. Uh, uh, now, let me show you the problem with this approach. Problem with this approach is that if I run this piece of code again, what will actually happen is uh, this test size will pick different thirty percent of the data points uh, in this in the next iteration 
rather than the uh, whatever it has picked in the previous iteration so now if i run it and what will happen uh, due to this fact that it has picked different um, uh, data points during that uh, training as well uh, for the testing as well so it is going to impact the score of our model now if i see here you can see that my random forest has increased now let's say if i uh, do the uh, different test size now you can see that it has come drastically down so what actually happening is that due to this train and test selection uh, of uh, data points my model score is getting impacted so uh, to cover this scenario or to to tackle this we use k fold and in k fold we as the name suggests we basically create k folds of our data and for those folds we iterate our uh, iterate our our data and we uh, keep one set for the uh, testing and other set for the training in the next we keep uh, the uh, next set for the testing and uh, the other set for the training so now uh, let me show it to you with a very basic example so now uh, to show it to you uh, let's say i am importing this k fold class which is basically inside my model selection library uh, i created an object of it now assume that so for this now i have created the uh, object of this class k fold now you can see that uh, to make you show uh, to show you uh, let's say i have create i have this data 115 16 17 18 and 19 so what actually it will do uh, this kf object will split this data into two sub list or subsets and it will give the indexes of those so you, if i show it to you you can see that uh, in the first iteration so as i have uh, uh, created three folds so it you can see that there are three folds one fold the second fold and the third fold so what it has done is that it has created three folds in the first fold it has kept these indexes for the testing and these indexes for the uh, training so these are the indexes not the actual data points as you can see the actual data points are 11 to 19 and these are the indexes so in the next iteration you can see that this 0 1 2 which it has kept in previous iteration for testing now it has kept it for during the training and it has picked 3 4 5 4 for the testing and the, in the next it has kept 0 1 2 3 4 5 4 for the training and these for the testing so you can see that uh, so what will happen and um, for this so it, it will uh, during that uh, training it will keep this and during the testing it will do this then in the next iteration it will train over this and uh, test over this so this is how it actually it is going to uh, cover that problem earlier before k fold what would have happened uh, let's say uh it has kept these records for the testing and these records for the training but these records uh, for the testing let's say have different type of uh, data points which it has never seen during the uh, training of this so what will happen it will be uh, seeing this these data points uh, these type of data point first time so my uh, model like score is going to be impacted so this is how actually this is the basic example now we can apply the same thing on our uh, same thing on our basically uh, this uh, this the iris data set so for that uh, what i am going to do i am going to importing uh, the stratified k fold which is similar to the k fold stratified k fold is better in a way that uh, in stratified k fold uh, it picks data points from each type of uh, category so let's say uh, assume that we have a question paper uh, uh, to make you understand a general example let's say we have a mathematics question paper there are three different section let's say algebra 
calculation and let's say trigonometry so uh, what stratified k fold will do for testing a subset it will pick one few sample from uh, first section let's say algebra few section from the second section let's say calculus and third section let's say uh, trigonometry uh, in k fold what will happen is it will pick let's say uh, all the sample from uh, from calculus and uh, your algebra it might not pick a sample from uh, the let's say trigonometry so what will happen uh, during the training if the trigonometry data point will come to the model model has never seen during the training it it will not able to predict well and it our score will go down so that's in that way uh, stratified k fold is better so here i am using stratified k fold created an objective of it and i am saying that uh, create four three folds for my data and uh, the data we are going to use is the same one which is basically our iris data set so now what i am going to do is uh, i am going to do uh, i am going to show it to you now for that uh, now for with the folds object i am splitting my this data and it will give me the train and test index so after i will get the train and test index what i am going to do is i am going to basically assign those uh, uh, based on those indexes my x train and x test so basically what i'm going to do is you can see that my iris dot data and this train index will pass into x train it will create the x train and it will create uh, iris dot data test index will create the x test and iris dot target uh, will create the train uh, passing the train index will create the y train and this will give them so you can assume that um, from this from this data from this x and y i created two sub list which contains the indexes and based on those indexes i am just picking my my x train and my x test after this what we can do is uh, we can uh, create a, a method let's say get score method uh, let's say I'm going to create a method which I'm going to use. I'm going to show where I'm going to use. Uh, now, let's say if I created a, this method, which basically gets score, and I'm going to pass this uh, a model object and X train, X test, Y train, Y test, and I'm going to use it. So basically, what I can do is uh, I can move it upside, and now after this. Now, next, what we can do is uh, we can get the score of each of these uh, each of these objects with using our uh, this K fold technique, and we can see that uh, we can see that uh, how our models are performing. So now you can say that I am passing the gate get score, uh, passing the object of my model my x train my x test my y train my y test so basically this has to come uh, here and let's say you can see here it this is 0 0.94 so basically uh, this has to come inside the for loop so uh, what we can do because we are going to iterate over over the folds so now if i run it uh, you can see that now if i uh, print it Now, if I print it, you can see that these are the uh, these are the score of my model for logistic regression over iterating these three folds. Since I have three folds, so for these three folds, it has created these. Uh, the same way uh, I can do for my SVM model and my uh, uh, my another model. But before that, what I can do is uh, rather than of printing. I what I can do is I can create a list and I can put uh, all of my score over there. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, uh, let's say, three lists for three models since we have three models. Uh, so and I'm going to do uh, I'm going to append my SVM logistic dot append. So at each iteration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append into uh, my this list. So what it will do, 
all the scores will come in related to score uh, or the scores related to logistic regression will come into this list the same way i am going i am going to do with the uh, svm model and the same way i can do with the uh, the uh, this uh, random forest model so uh, what we can do is this way and if i run it so there is some error let me see it where it is uh, where the problem is uh, unmatched so there is some somewhere uh, some problem with uh, some problem with uh, extra uh, so i got some extra now if you print this this list so you can see that uh, for logistic regression these are the scores for three folds uh, for svm these are the scores and for random forest these are the scores you can see that now uh, moving next what we can do is we we can basically so this is the thing uh, that we have done by our by our own to make you understand how it actually works but in in our uh, in our machine learning library we have already have a built in method uh, which basically works similar to this which i just shown to you you basically pass the model x train x test y train y test and you can get the cross well score so for that is basically our uh, cross well score method and i can show it to you which works similar to this one so this is inside model selection import cross well score this is the class now if i create an object of this and i pass i can show it to you uh, so uh, what i am doing going to do i am going to create an object and i am passing the model this is my model this is my x this is my y and this is my false how many false i am going to create and it will give me a list so now if you uh, see score lr it will give me the similar list you can see that 0 0.969694 and here we have also got so that means this cross well score works exactly same uh, the way i did uh, if i would have shown uh, if i would have come directly on cross well score you might not be able to relate that much very well so the same thing uh, i can do for the uh, other models as well and now let's say if uh, if we do the if we do the uh, for svm as well and you see that svm score svc and you will see that 98 98 96 98 90 98 96 and this is how and the same way uh, the third one model third model you can do third model is basically our random forest and you can see that this list is uh, giving me the same thing so and as a last resort what we can do now you can see that now my i have created uh, three models for each model i have uh, three folds so i got three score so which one i should pick so basically what we can do is we can average out for each model and we can pick the best score so to do that what we have we have this np dot average uh, I'm going to show one example. Uh, we can what we can do is uh, and uh, inside our NumPy library we have this average method and we can pass this score RF list. So it will give me the average of these. So this is my average. So this is how actually basically K fold K cross well K fold cross validation works and. Uh, that's all for today's video and uh, guys uh, please do let me know if something you want to learn and i i have not covered in this video related to kfold uh, so that i can improve on and if you really like this video that uh, then please uh, subscribe my channel and uh, i have created a complete uh, complete playlist for for absolute beginners um, complete ml playlist and you can check uh, check out that ml playlist uh, you, you just need to have a basic understanding of python library and if you 
go uh, as per the sequence of the playlist then you, i am sure you would be able to clear most of your machine learning concepts uh, so till the next video thanks for watching bye bye take care